It's all a matter of perception Where we stand in space and time There is no you or me that I can see Only delusions of the mind Hello and welcome back to Soul Perspectives. I am Kip. And I'm Evan. And today we are going to talk about love. Love that is all caps love. Love that differentiates between romantic love, puppy love, whatever other love you might be thinking of. We're going to share it from the all caps and explain why we're doing that. Love is another one of those concepts that has become polarizing has been hijacked by the system, industry, business, a hallmark holiday love, and we're here to set the record straight and give love its due. And, and, and meanwhile, you know, love is the one thing that when we look out through all of human history, it seems to be pretty ubiquitous no matter the tongue it was spoken in. No matter how they try to break it down and find different ways to describe it, there seems to be a special certain love that is ubiquitous, that's foundational to our, our very experience of being. And that's kind of what we're talking about when we say all caps love. All caps love, the infinite universal organizing intelligence of the universe, the binding agent that brings things together in unity and in harmony. The easiest way to take an emotional pulse and to know if we're in a love state a positive emotional state is are we in harmony is yes. there a question if there's a question oh, I don't know then you already have doubt which is not love right it's flow it's comfort it's connection it's ease it's harmony it's certainty it's confidence that's love our heart will know and if there's doubt we know what that means. It's letting go. It's the end of resistance. Like you said, even love has been polarizing, which is crazy. Love doesn't judge. Love, if you're having an experience and it's fearful or whatever, okay, well, that must be the experience you came here to have. It's not, it's not passing judgment on this. And when you start perceiving of love from that perspective, everything is exactly perfect as it is. We are experiencing exactly what we chose to come here to experience. We're the ones writing this story. It's becoming aware of that is what love is that we're talking about when we're saying all caps love. As you said, this is love that's foundational to what we are, is the source of what we are. It is the supreme reality beyond the beyond the beyond of whatever story we're telling ourselves. Love is what we are. Love is what all is. It can't not be. It is our true self, at least from my understanding. <laughs> so there is a lot of relevance with this, of course, because our emotions are tied up with our intellect in this whole crazy process called psychology, which I define as the confusing cacophony of chaotic consciousness. What am I, what am I thinking? Is that right? Is that wrong? All the crazy monkey mind stuff that goes on is the psychology element. And the our challenge then is to align our emotional state with love so that our brain can function fully, openly, smoothly, in harmony and seek loving solutions for anything in our lives. Like we're just trying, we're going through life and we're trying to get our needs met, our physical needs obviously, our emotional needs as well. And Frank Herbert was it in the book Dune, uh, proclaimed that fear is the mind killer. I don't know that we necessarily would agree that it kills the mind, but it kills or robs or impedes our ability to think clearly, to think fully, to engage the capacity of our minds to solve things, to get needs met, to cultivate more harmony, to cultivate more unity. And what happens is that when we get in the state of a negative emotion, our amygdala gets triggered, our fight or flight mechanism, and that impedes our ability to use our full mind to come up with solutions. So it limits our response to 
how can I eliminate this source of, of challenge for myself or how can I escape and get the heck away from it completely? And there are only so many options in those two areas versus everything else we might come up with. True solutions, solutions that take into consideration more than our own personal needs. And especially because we are all interdependent, so that becomes an issue as well. So when we talk about getting into a state of love, a state of coherence with the heart and the mind, we now have access to so much more of our intellect, our brains, our minds, and we can be much more creative and come up with things that simply weren't available when the brain was stuck in a state of looking for, how can I destroy this thing or how can I escape it? And not just our minds does it open, it, it, it opens us up to the universal consciousness, literally the consciousness that, that we're all tapped into. Right now, what, what these are, again, from my understanding and my experience and what I've studied in, in, in my life's journey here, is that these, are, these stories we come to experience are love being what it can never be, finite and many. These are stories of duality. Right now, because we're coming from this place of fear, we're having these stories of duality experience as resistance and separation and um, frustration and sadness and suffering and addiction and all of these things. Love doesn't have to be experienced like that. The duality of love that we're a part of does not have to be at war with one another. Yin is not at war with Yang. In fact, I see that someone, I see the symbol of love and harmony, that we're all connected. We don't have to be at odds with one another. Love isn't at odds with one another. If it was, there wouldn't be any story to be a part of. So this all caps love, this distinction that we're making, it's all caps love. I can love you and need to create separation and protect myself from you. I can still love something that is potentially harmful. Absolutely. I can, we, can, we can love the monster and yet still protect ourselves from it. That's the difference. Do you love a monster? No, you hate a monster, you hear a monster. Okay, true, but you can love, all caps, love the monster, which means accept, embrace, allow it to be what it is and still love for myself which is getting my needs met, protecting myself. Self-preservation is the highest form of love. So this all caps love that we're talking about is a love that takes it into a realm where we can always appreciate love, we can always value love, and love doesn't have to be polarizing. Love can be that one thing that we all agree is the thing that fuels life, binds matter together, drives our creativity and our interdependence and our eusociality. We are an ultra-social animal, as it were. And there is a fundamental core element of that eusociality that I would call love. <laughs> the all caps Sorry. love, that binding, unifying agent. So that we can have polarizing opinions. We can have, we can have needs that conflict with one another and still embrace that love that is the blanket under which we are all huddled, whether we acknowledge it or not, recognize it or not, or like it or not. We are all in the same human family. We are all being protected by this same environment. And that love is the core element, the foundation of it all. And you mentioned the monster. It reminds me when um, a couple of years back, after we first started working together, I had my gallbladder out. And you came to the hospital and I just yeah, waking up from all the medicine. I'd gone on some friggin' spirit vision quest, and it was all about just that. The fear monster being confronted by the gentleness of the fawn, and coming in just the beauty in the fawn's eyes, not seeing the ugliness, not seeing the fray, seeing all the beautiness, and wanting to reach out and comfort the monster. Suddenly the monster vanished and was no more. Or, even better yet, the monster becomes beautiful, because here's another example of how love, this is my perception of this, but I, I do think I'm onto something here. There's a, um, a Nova series uh, all about dogs. And one of the things they show us in this is they do, there's a study that was done on Siberian foxes in Russia. And they would take the foxes that were more gentle and docile and then nurture them. And then the ones that were vicious, they'd breed those. And the vicious ones, I mean, they were kind of frightening and ugly and they're snarling, they're snapping through the cage and biting people clear beyond the bars of the cage. The ones that were loved and they set apart with the nurturing, they took on all these other shapes and their tails became curly and they took on and they were just cute and adorable. I'm going, oh my God, that's what love does to it. Mm. It, it, it changes us in, in foundational ways that we aren't even aware of. So while we're sitting here wondering, well, what is this love thing? 
you take on the love, it changes everything about you. You won't even notice it. And then you'll suddenly look back one day and you go, how was I ever anything other than this? And you realize I never was. I just hadn't accepted myself fully for what I truly am. And it reminds me of the innocence of youth, too. The children who don't see race in each other, don't see difference in each other. They're not scared of a thing unless they're taught to be scared of it. Absolutely. Whether it's another person or a monster or a concept or a story or anything, they have to learn that fear. The love is what's inherent in, again, the fact that we're you social. We want to connect. We want to bond. Who are you? You know, are you my mommy? <laughs> right? So. And, and you know, and, and we've been watching just recently. We're watching, um, and I've been paying attention to what these really miraculous children, these supremely talented children are doing things that got to have 10,000 hours to be a master and 70 years old to be able to sing like this and play the drums like this. Here's a six-year-old Japanese girl who somehow figured out how to play Queen, John Bonham, jazz, everything perfectly on the drums and like Kevin and I were talking no one's told her she can't the fear program has it come in that says I can't I'm lesser than I can't do this mm-hmm. she's literally tapped in that universal consciousness that universal source of wisdom that we're all tapped into if we open up to and and allow that fear programming to dissolve all of a sudden we see things as they actually are that love love is clarity love is certainty that clarity love is confident yeah. love is open love is creative love unifies love is always there for us it's infinite we'll never run out we have an infinite wellspring of love in our own hearts at all times and the only thing standing between us and basking in that love is the overlaid fear that's been imposed upon us systematically for generation after generation and so our work therefore is simply to heal our work is to nurture and heal ourselves through love so that we can emerge our highest potential and our true selves which is ultra social which is compassionate which wants to thrive we all have the biological imperative to survive we have the human intelligence to be able to thrive love is the core ingredient that fuels and energizes all of those processes and another really important thing that love brings to us is it changes our perception or our relationship to the unknown you mentioned infinite to me um because it's really before i really understood what love was I was mostly immersed in the idea, my, my point of seeking was really all founded in infinity and what that means and there not being a beginning or an end. And I really came to the point that this is something entirely unknowable to, the, to my mind. I can never comprehend this. No one ever really can. And that excited me because that's one of the most important things any of us can do is move beyond our irrational fear of the unknown, which we would commonly perceive of as just our fear of dying and what goes on after that. When you embrace love, that becomes exciting. You, you're not, love, as much as we're talking about a word, it's undefinable, it's immutable, it's unchangeable, it's, it's which is redundant, immutable, and unchangeable, same thing. <laughs> but anyway, the, it helps us move beyond that, the fear of the known. It helps us look at the unknown as, oh my God, I'm on this infinite journey of discovery. No matter how I could be for a trillion existences, I'm no closer to the end of this than I am right now. I'm no closer to that ultimate answer than I am right now. And rather than being terrified about that, it's exciting. Oh my God, I get to go on this endless journey yeah. of discovery and experience forever and ever and ever. And that's not something we should be afraid of because it ought, what's the option? The option is, okay, I know everything. I've reached the destination. Then what? Then what? Love says, then what is what it's all about. So then what? Then what? I guess it's all a matter of perception. (laughs) Well, as always, we thank you so much for joining us on Soul Perspectives. It's always our pleasure to spend a little time with you and share some of what may be fairly unique perspectives that we hold and that uh, we would love to inspire you to rethink in any way what has been put in there to believe is the truth, whatever that is. And come to Soul Documentary and share some love with us. You are whether you know you are or not. And we're going to share lots of it back. Because it's all a matter of perception. We'll see you next week on Soul Perspectives. Thanks for joining us. Come over to souldocumentary.love. Check us out over there. Grateful you joined us. So grateful. We love you. One, two, three, four. It's all a matter of perception. Where we stand in space and time There is no you or me that I can see Only delusions of love
of mine.